YouTube, I've got two stories for you today, both of them heinous, horrendous, horrific, hideous, and whatever other hate word you could think of. First story I'm going to start with is the murder of Ingrid Escamilla Vargas. She was born in 1995 in Puebla, Mexico, and she was around 25 years old at the time that her life was taken. And on February the 9th, 2020, her life was brutally taken by her boyfriend at the time. He was 46 years old, Eric Francisco Robledo Rosa. Now, both of these stories do emanate from Mexico. I don't speak a lick of Spanish unless they're soccer players. Those names, I know. I don't know any other Spanish, so forgive me if I butchered the names. Forgive me if I throw in some humor here or there. It's just to sanitize, I guess. Uh, these terrible stories and forgive me for cursing but I can't help it sometimes so if you like the video please subscribe follow me on Instagram and I do have a second channel all the links are in the description now Eric himself he had a history of domestic violence it was reported that his ex-wife in Mexico reported him to the police on multiple occasions for times where he abused her. Ingrid herself never had an easy life she was four years old with four siblings when her mother abandoned her and her father struggled to give them all a good life. In terms of education, Ingrid graduated with a tourism and business administration qualification. People that knew Ingrid, they said that she was full of life and one of her goals in life was to travel around the world, meet new people, see new cultures. Ingrid did not like being in one place more than once. Now in regards to Ingrid and Eric's relationship, they were together for around five years Eric himself was a civil engineer and they both lived in an apartment in Mexico City. It was said that they were both a, a caring couple. There was no signs of danger or any issues out in the public, but little did people know that things would take a completely different route. Eric started to become verbally and physically abusive towards Ingrid. For example, when he would go to work, he would not allow Ingrid to have any guests in their home. Neighbours did say that they very rarely saw Ingrid leave the home and given this type of abuse, Ingrid was forced to report Eric to the police in June 2019. Eric himself, whenever he would finish work, he would normally arrive home intoxicated and drunk and this would lead to a lot of incidences between the two where they would argue they'd have a disagreement and then Eric would lash out. So on February the 9th, 2020, it was said that they were having one of these altercations and Ingrid, she went and got a knife and she slashed Eric, who in a fit of rage, as he puts it, went and got more knives himself and inserted them into Ingrid over and over again. Please keep in mind this notion that Eric was attacked first was what he said. So we don't know for sure, but it is important to take this into context. So he inserted these knives into her neck several times. And then when her life was finally gone, he started to cut off and peel off her skin. Before I go on, we can all ascertain that this was probably due to uh, being intoxicated and it was just a violent rage. See, as he had been drinking, it makes you numb, right? Alcohol makes you numb. And a lot of the times... You don't necessarily, like if you were to touch someone while you're drunk, you may not feel much because your, your fingertips are none. And potentially, as he was inserting the knife into the neck, perhaps he didn't realize the ferocity of each incision. I'm not justifying it. I'm just trying to put my head in that situation. But what the fuck would make you peel someone's skin off? What the fuck is wrong with you, lad? I mean, it was said that he peeled off her skin and he took some of her internal organs and he tried to flush them down the toilet. And the reason why he tried to do this is because he tried to hide the body. And I'm thinking to myself, drugs go down the toilet, shit go down the toilet, human organs? And when he realized that this method of disposal was not successful, this genius decided to cut the body up put her in like plastic bags, uh, wrapped bags, and throw her on the street right next to his house. During this altercation, the neighbors, they heard loud whiny noises, different than normal. And they decided to call the police because they were really concerned. So when the police arrived, they see Eric drenched in blood. 
and eventually Ingrid's body is completely dismembered when they found it. To the police, it was pretty obvious this was the work of Eric, so they arrested him straight away and took him to jail. The police didn't confirm this, but it was said that Eric's son, who is autistic, witnessed the whole murder. Now, for some bizarre reason, before the police came, Eric actually called his ex-wife and he confessed to her everything and this to me tells me that he still has some love and affection for his ex-wife maybe maybe they were still attached because of their son which is fair but if you commit a crime if you take someone's life and the first person you call is your mother or your father or dare i say an ex-girlfriend it's an indication into one's mind on what that person means to them ingrid's funeral was attended by around 300 people all of which demanded justice. And although Eric was arrested and charged, to this day, I have not been able to find what his sentence was or has been. So if any of you guys know what his final sentence was, what the final ruling was in court, do comment and let me know. Now, due to photos of Ingrid's body being released on the internet and leaked um, inside some local newspapers, the government decided to come up with La Ley Ingrid, which is known as Ingrid's Law. It was something approved by the Mexican government to provide dignity of the victims and their families. Its purpose is to penalize the sharing of documents and images and videos related to specific images of the victim. And the crime is considered worse if these images of, you know, the victim's body or whatever happen to be a female, kids or adoles adolescents. See, in 2021, 3,462 women were murdered in Mexico. Around 10 women a day, that works out to be and 3,000 of these women were victims of femicide. So before I get to the next story as a man, see, if this was a woman doing it, I can't give you no psych analysis. I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist because you guys know I'm a fraud, but as a man, I understand the mind a bit better, I guess, another man's mind, that is, right? So in this case, I'm looking at Eric and I'm thinking to myself, okay, so he comes home drunk all the time. It's clear to me, given the age gap, this was like a trophy wife. It wasn't his wife, his girlfriend, but he looked at her as a piece of property. Purely speculation. I don't have the case files. I don't know. I'm just looking at what I'm seeing, right? And I think for him, he just wanted her to cook for him, clean for him, have sex with him, and that's it. And he can do whatever he wants because his true love, the woman of his dreams, was his ex-wife but he probably fucked that up anyway. So now we come on to someone even more sicker. And I don't mean that in the sense that, you know, one crime is worse than the other. They're both really bad, but the details I'm about to give you, be warned. His name is Andres Filomeno Mendoza Silas. Again, I know I butchered that name. He was also known as the Butcher of Atizipan and the Monster of Atizipan. Andres himself was born on November the 29th, 1947 in Oahu, Mexico. Again, I know I butchered that name. Now, what's interesting is that he was 72 years old when he was caught. So try and understand the library of victims that he has. He was known by his neighbors as a normal and peaceful man. And it's always the quiet ones. It's always the unassuming ones that end up being the worst. Now, after working in politics, he ended up being a butcher in the city of Lal near Pentla. And this is where he learned to cut and trim chunks of meat and his co-workers did say that he became very skilled he was very fast whenever they'd get meat orders he was one of the quickest butchers to get the orders done now it is said that he took the life for around 30 women although some sources say 20 women um, but it isn't for sure known how many women's life he took in his life so it was known that reina gonzalez amador was his last victim. She went missing on May the 14th, 2021, which was a Friday, and she had been missing for a day. Her husband, Bruno Angel, he was a police officer, and he was aware that his wife would sometimes go to Andres's place, you know, to talk about work and stuff. Bruno's wife, she worked with cell phones and with phone gadgets, and she was known to be a helper, and Bruno and his wife knew Andres pretty well and his family. They said that he seemed like a reliable and a very good man. So when the police got the report that she's gone missing, they searched for her, and after some time, Bruno thought to himself, well, let me go see Andres, let me go over to his place. And that's when it was all revealed. Described by officers to what was a horror movie, there was blood, bones, and female accessories all over the place. There were shoes, there was bags, there was makeup items, there was IDs 
of different females, I guess you could consider these trophies that he kept of his victims. And at the home, the police see Raina's body flat on the table, bloodied. And she was lying down as if Andreas was ready to get the knife and be a butcher. She was 34 years old at the time and she had two young daughters. The police determined that the cause of her death was multiple incisions of knives into her body. As if all of this wasn't enough, the police decided let's get more. So they took some dogs into the home to sniff around and see what they could find. So when the dogs go around sniffing around the house, they uncovered a whole bunch of bodies which gave me John Wayne Gacy vibes. These bodies were buried in the ground and initially the police found a whole bunch of gruesome videos where Andreas himself videotaped him and his victims. It was said that Andreas would peel off their face, their scalp and then he would consume some of his victims. He cooked and grilled some of their body parts. And it's when I read stories like this, right? I've never been to In-N-Out Burger in California right but everyone here on the east coast they tell me it's not that great mate it's better than this and like for the past two or three days i've ordered uber eats i ordered kfc twice forgive me and each time they sent me three drumsticks i didn't ask for drumsticks i wanted the thigh because i'm a man but they sent me these grimy little ass drumsticks but i ate it and i didn't complain you want to know why because it's better than this shit police also found a notebook which contained the name of 29 women of whom they believed their lives were taken to the notebook and the women's clothes suggested that a lot of these women were older and the police determined he had been doing this for quite some time 29 bodies you better believe he did so on may the 15th 2021 andres was arrested and i think this is where the motive comes in so when the police take him in for questioning he said that he would peel the skin off their faces because they looked quite pretty and when they asked him okay but why are you doing this in the first place he would say because they rejected my sexual advances and this makes my dick itch right think about this think of the story he takes the life of multiple women and he keeps their items he takes them into the home he gains their trust he takes them into the home right and then he you know stabs them whatever he may do he kills them why in the name of rejection are you this fucking pathetic and again with this similar to the previous story i couldn't determine how long his sentence would be but to me that doesn't matter okay how i don't understand how as a man look i i get rejection hurts you as a man right i feel like i've been rejected my whole life and that's why i kind of have a defense mechanism whenever people come close to me in fact right i avoid people in real life you know when you go to an elevator and there's three or four people i'm not taking the elevator i'm getting the fuck away and i'd rather be by myself this all comes from a defense mechanism developed having felt like i've been rejected most of my life in whatever situations i've been in it doesn't matter the context that's what i'm telling you well what does that mean when Girls in the past have broken my heart and rejected me when women I've approached and they've told me to fuck off because this happened many times. What am I going to do? Peel their head off? Now you could infer that he must have had some kind of predisposed mental issues to act upon this, right? It's one, again, I've said it before, it's one thing to think like, okay, you're with a girl, she breaks your heart, she doesn't want to be with you. Let's just say worst case scenario, yeah, worst case scenario, he meets a girl, he likes her, she gives the indication that she likes him and then when he makes his move when he confesses his love she goes no i just want to be friends that's the ultimate rejection right they call it stringing along just an ex as an example right in that moment what the fuck are you gonna do what like hit her be physical with her you can't be man enough to be like okay well i'm quite a catch i'm charming i'll just go find another girl and let's just say for him this really did happen right and 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 you know it's it's easy for me to say in the moment on how one should act right when you know they're heartbroken or whatever so let's just say he cried he quit his job he became depressed whatever you want to call it that does not mean you have a right to start taking the life of other women to make up for the pain you felt because of a woman and it goes back to what i've said in all my previous videos both these guys just a bunch of muppets. So why don't you guys comment, tell me what you think.